Hello animators and welcome back to my tutorials. Settle down in your seats because today I'm going to show you how you can make blood effects in my animator. Now as you might have seen from the intro, I'm going to show you three different methods you can do this. As usually, there is always more than one way and I'm never limiting you to just one. If you have a tutorial idea you want to see featured on this channel, I recommend you join my Discord server because it is an ideal place for both suggesting and voting for the content that I post. And now let's begin the tutorial. We have our test subject in here and if you want to see blood, we have to harm him. <laughs> Note, I do not promote any kind of violent acts. This is solely for the purpose of the tutorial to teach you guys how to animate blood effects. You know, I'm thinking a sword. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's go with that. It's okay. <laughs> I will not even bother animating our Steve guy. I'm just gonna show you the blood effects. So as I said before, we have three different methods on how we would do the blood effects. Let's start with the most simple one and add a surface. Now I want a bras for an image which looks like this. Uh, you can find this on Google. Just type in blood splat, go for a transparent color, and you will find a bunch of these. Somewhat mess with this image's rotation points. So the rotation center is right where the blood splat starts. And now basically position the image on the other side where the sword was. Now, scale it completely down at this point and scale it up when the sword hits it. And then, of course, stop. Scale it up even more, rotate it downwards, move it outwards a bit, maybe. And, of course, I'll fight down. And maybe let's give it some ease out transition or something. And if we play this... Okay, yeah, let's uh, give an extreme ease into this one. A blood splatter effect, you know what I mean? This guy is bleeding, okay? It's a pretty cheap and quick way to create blood effects. I'm not too keen of it, but it does the trick if you're not really doing anything too realistic. Let's get rid of the surface. Go away. The second method is gonna involve particle spawners. So, open up a particle spawner, blood splatter, and now we're going to mess with some of the particle mechanics. If you're not familiar with particle mechanics, click the eye in the corner because I've done a wonderful particle spawner tutorial and I think you guys could use it, but if you've seen the video already, then we don't have a problem here. You should be all set up and let's begin. We want the spawner to be creating cubes, so add a cube, delete it, this needs to be in the timeline here. Now open up the editor. Uh, let's say 50 small cubes in a small region around the creator. Let's make it a box. Particle 1, blood. Now if we press S, we can see the preview of what's going to happen. So let's go for kind and click the cubes. And now we're going to summon cubes. And first thing I want to do is decrease the scale. So zero. Basically create small cubes like this. Two seconds will do. Now the speed, let's mess with the X and see where that goes. That's definitely not the, the speed we want to be messing with. So let's mess with the Z. Now, minus Z is the one we want. So minus Z is going to be like minus 100, minus 20, so it's gonna be like this. Actually, let's go for Z of zero. And multiply Z is going to slow down even more. And of course, the Y is going to go upwards way more than it's going to go downwards. And add Y is going to be adding, maybe a bit faster. <laughs> okay, I guess. The bounce factor is going to be decreased, like 0 0.1 or so. But there needs to be a way to stop these particles when they hit the ground, like this. Alright, this is something. Now, of course, let's uh, change the color to random, starting from red, really dark red. This red should be darker as well, like this. Now, if the particles summon at this point, this guy got stabbed. Basically, it's the same kind of method, except that instead of images, you're now using particles. And these particles are gonna become your best friends, because this looks better than having the, the ugly splat image. Of course, depends on your level of animation skill. You can go with any method you want, but this one actually looks pretty cool. So if I do this... Oh my god! <laughs> so it even works if you, like, spam it, doesn't look too bad. You know me, I gotta experiment. But the final thing I actually want to show you guys is these. And I think the best way, personally, the best way you can do animated blood effects is by animating it yourself. Look at this. Okay, let's ignore these two guys in the background. These look like pretty solid blood splatters, okay? This is a blood burst, okay? Another one, but different. This one is like, uh, it's squirting out of a vein or something, and this one is just yet another burst. So I got the original idea for these from Skibs' blood pack. Yes, he released a particle pack, which is mainly focused on creating realistic blood splatter effects. I gotta say, it's creative use of particles, but it did give me an idea on how to create these blood splatter effects here, you see on screen right now. So if you mind, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to make these anime ones, because these are what this tutorial is focused around. Let's minimize this and say hi to Gordon Sharpsey again. 
Oh yeah, top meme. I have made this image and it's titled the particle checkerboard. It's just a checkerboard with red and blue fields. The image altogether is 200 by 200 pixels and each of these small squares is 20 by 20 pixels. This image right here is going to be like your particle item sheet. Like an item sheet but for particles. Each field is reserved for one particle slot. If you take a look at my project from before, this is what it would look like. So the background is always going to be brought down, semi-transparent, and once you export the image, you make it invisible. This is the image you export and this is your blood splatter particle effect. Each particle is on its own grid. This is one animation. First frame, second frame, third frame. You know, you can see a sort of like a blood splatter pattern right here. And we're gonna create one of those right now. Bring down this layer here and a new layer and this is gonna be basically your main particle splatter layer. Dark red, bring it down because the blood is darker. Let's begin with something. And I do gotta warn you, this is not too easy. So this is gonna be my first frame. And if you want these to be exactly centered, I recommend you copying the entire square and then pasting it so the squares match nicely. Uh, turn this layer down a bit and add layer number three because I want to be able to draw over my layer and see where the previous pixels were. So it usually takes a lot of trial and error, but after you're done with one frame, go to layer two, select your eraser tool and erase everything which is left on layer two. Then merge down layer three, and this is now your second image. Copy paste this square once again, add a new layer, and I'll paint over the existing pixels. What I do recommend you doing here is trying to keep a similar shape to this. So this stream is gonna go upwards, and now I'm slowly thinking, what if I just cut the stream off here? Not connect it anymore, it's still touching, but in the next frame I'm just gonna cut it off. So this stream is squirting up on its own, like cutting off, and now of course uh, it's kind of like dripping outwards, maybe this can still hold together. You know what I'm trying to do? This can go outwards a bit more, and it's gonna start dripping down. This particle here is moved upwards by one pixel, and there's a hole in here now. It kind of does look like the animation is following the previous frame. So this is now splitting off. You see what I'm talking about? This is going to be connected, but this stream is now split off into its own direction. And now it's slowly getting thinner and thinner until it disappears. That's what we're gonna do with this. Uh, this stream is now falling down. This pixel is now merging into this one. This pixel is gonna go one down like this. And this body of fluids is just going to uh, fall apart slowly, actually. Of course, this is a quick tutorial. I'm not going too much into the detail, but the idea is pretty much the same. Now we're adding less and less dots because the bloodstream is of course sprinkling out into the air, falling apart. Yes, maybe this one still shows. This one, one more frame and then it's gonna be gone as well. I could say this is gonna be the final frame. That's it. <laughs> Erase layer number two, merge down layer number three. Of course, make this layer fully visible now. Make the background invisible. This is your particle sheet. Now, file, save as, blood, uh, save as a PNG. Warning, needs to be a PNG because PNG supports by image transparency. That's important if you want this to work. Now hit save. Yes, flatten, but then press Control plus Z to undo this change because you want to keep your layers if by chance you need to go back and fix something. The layers must remain where they are. Also, I will give you a download link to this check checkerboard file as well as some of my test blood splats that I made for this tutorial. Basically I'll give you these files here so you can play around with it. But these are not the best ones so I don't recommend you using them in your animations. It's just something so you can see the mechanics and play around with it. So make a new particle creator, blood, open editor and now we're gonna make it spawn one particle and not constantly. So when you click one particle is going to summon. Make it spawn in the region, make the region very small so you have some diversity of where the blood splat is gonna happen. Blood and of course now with kind sprite go for kind sheet because we need a particle sheet for this to work. Go to texture, minecraft, bras, and now we're gonna bras for the blood we just created. As you see it's pretty small right here but we do remember that each square was 20 pixels long so let's go for 20 by 20 and now you can see this animation starts here and I'll drag all the way up here so you can have animation playing from the start to the end. Again if you're confused watch my particle tutorial that I made before. You will understand everything much easier that way. Well, let's go for a speed of minus one to one so it's pretty much still and let's uh, raise the animation speed a bit so it's like maybe a bit more you can of course go for something really obscure or something yeah this is never gonna play <laughs> 
added to the collection, boys. We have five of these here. There we go. A blood splatter tutorial mine meter. Now, if you are still too lazy to use any of these methods, I recommend you check out Skip's particle pack. I know I don't use it myself, but the particle pack still looks pretty dope. So if you need some cool blood effects, I recommend you using that. That was it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, let me know by dropping a like on this video. And hey, if you like tutorials, hit the bell. So I post my content every two days, and I think there's a lot to see here. Now, thank you for watching. Good luck with your blood effects, and until next time, stay sharp.